Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we'll be discussing the first person selected as a minister to Italy. Today's subject is a man named Ralph Izzard. Now, let's not get hung up on the fact that there was a founding father whose name was Ralph, which does seem a little strange for the 18th century, but we'll move right along to his life. So Mr. Izzard was a young man who was orphaned at a young age, but he was from South Carolina and his family had sent him to England to study in an upper grade school and he would stay there for a university. And he actually ended up spending the better part of the first 30 years of his life in England. But he had made a few return trips to visit South Carolina, and I guess you could take the man out of South Carolina, but you can't take the South Carolina out of the man. And when the American Revolution broke out, despite still being in England, he sided with the Patriots. Now he decided to return home, and he was traveling through Paris on his way home when word came that the Continental Congress had chosen him as a diplomat, and they were to send him to Tuscany. Now, Italy at the time is not Italy as we know it today. It was not one nation. It was kind of separate nation-states. They, they were loosely tied together, uh, much like Germany was at the time. But Tuscany was one of the more powerful of these, and he was, uh, Ralph Fisher was appointed to be the ambassador to the Grand Duke of Tuscany. So he does this. He goes over and he expects to be taken seriously. This is, however, just a, about a year and a half after the Declaration of Independence was announced, and seeing as the states of Italy were loosely connected and not military, militarily superior to anyone, they refused to see him. And that seems to be because they just didn't want to piss off the British Navy. That would have been a horrible idea. Uh, so Izzard goes back to Paris, where he becomes embroiled in the debates between uh, Benjamin Franklin and Silas Dean and Arthur and William Lee. And if you're not familiar, there was a uh, there were some debates between the ambassadors to France and exactly what should be offered in the treaty and how we should pay the French for our assistance and things of that nature. And there were pretty strenuous disagreements. So. Um, yeah, even John Adams is there when uh, Ralph Izzard storms in yelling and complaining about Benjamin Franklin, and he ends up taking the side of Arthur Lee. Now, Arthur Lee and Ralph Izzard separately write back to the Continental Congress talking about what a terrible job Ben Franklin's doing and Silas Dean is doing. And uh, this becomes not only an important disagreement in Paris, but it's really the first major disagreement in the Continental Congress of all the political disagreements we might have today in the House and the Senate, this was the first one. Uh, and I, I, I made videos, I'll put a link to my video about Silas Dean, which I elaborate more on that discussion, but let it be known that Ralph Izzard took the side of Arthur Lee and the Lee brothers. Richard Henry Lee uh, is the most famous of which. Francis Lightfoot Lee also signed the Declaration of Independence. Um, and Izzard... Unfortunately for him, luckily really for America, he was on the losing side of that battle. Uh, as John Adam distinctly put it, um, Benjamin Franklin uh, had won the hearts of the French and the Americans. And therefore, it's best to be on Benjamin Franklin's side, even if you disagree with Franklin. It's at least better to be in his good graces. Uh, and Ralph Izzard did not follow suit. So he was recalled because he was not in Italy, and he was making a scene in France, and he was brought back to the United States. But he got back to South Carolina, who almost immediately sent him right on over to the Continental Congress. So now he's right in the heart of the Continental Congress. And he's there, he arrives after Yorktown, but he's there to help oversee with the rest of the Continental Congressmen uh, the conclusion of the war, the signing of the treaty, and the establishment of peace. And he's there for a few years, then he goes back home, and then he is selected, after the Constitution is ratified, Ralph Izzard is chosen as one of the inaugural members of the United States Senate. And each state, then as now, gets two people to be senators. And when there were only 13 states, there were only 26 people chosen as inaugural members of the United States Senate. And Ralph Izzard is one of those lucky few. On top of that, he would actually, he'd be there for six years and he'd spend a few months as president pro temper, which essentially made him vice president of the Senate. Uh, so after John Adams, he was in charge of the Senate for several months early in its existence. 
Um, and that, in essence, is the life of Ralph Izzard, a name that I guess is not surprising people don't know because I just feel like Ralph is not a name people had back then. Tench. Tench was a name you could have in the 18th century. Ralph, it just, no offense to any Ralphs in there. It's a great name. It just doesn't seem that um, old-timey. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like. It really helps me out. And if you're new here, you just stumbled on, I put out videos five days a week plus a live one on Saturday. So hit subscribe because we have a lot of fun together talking about the American Revolution and the obscure founders who don't get any credit or enough credit. So anyway, I'm Jason. Thank you for watching and I'll see you with another video tomorrow.